Taylor, it is an absolute pleasure to be speaking with you. First things first, man, how is your, how's your day going? Oh, my day is going great, man. You know, I just uh, had a, an amazing acting lesson with my acting coach, Warner Laughlin. We're working on this, uh, this script that I wrote called Young Bloods about um, SEAL Team 6 and the cartel. And um, I'm, we're going through through like a, an actor's perspective uh, for character development and all that. So I'm, I'm really fired up about that. I'm trying to get that out here hopefully uh, in the next couple of months uh, with investors and all that. Um, and I'm going to plug in right after I get off the horn with you and just start going through some of the new songs because we're going down to Mechanic Studios, which is like this beautiful church, old church, at the best gear in all of Montreal. So I'm going there tomorrow at 1.30 to do walkthrough and figure out where I want to put the cameras and we'll do another six songs uh, live uh, with the band, hopefully in September. So I'm really looking forward to that. And then we have Bulletproof Live uh, releasing on September 4th. So I'm, I'm very excited about that. So we're just going through all the artwork and, you know, the edits all in, the, it's in Los Angeles going through color right now. So I'm super excited about that. We did that at Madame Wood studio here in Montreal. And um, we're just, you know, hanging out on social media, talking to fans um and just getting getting the word out there man we've been getting a lot of positive response back from everybody regarding this uh the live versions of these songs yeah and, you know staying busy man staying busy. that's it man my god what an incredible incredible bit of work you've got going on right now i love working man i love working it's my favorite thing ever okay well then bearing that in mind coping over the last 18 months or so regarding you know <laughs> what how you been holding up I have a great wife and two beautiful kids and a very supported, like amazing group of musicians. And um, we've all been hanging in there, jumping on Zoom, talking to each other. Um, it's been nice, like, I guess this past year, we've been able to see each other, the Montreal band here, we've been able to get into the studio and see each other. And then Glenn Robinson and I have been working remotely since the beginning of COVID, making this onslaught of, uh, let's see, we think we did about 20 tracks yeah. that we've been working on. So we're we're releasing one track a month every fourth of the month, um, as you've seen. And, um, you know, I, I, I want to be in front of people. I want to be in a smoky, dirty, grungy fucking stage. I want to, I want to like plug in my Mesa boogie and just hear it open up and, and then let the count in of the, my drummer come in and just go for it. I mean, I, I miss that. I miss that energy. And especially like right before we walk on stage, just the energy of the audience, like not having that, it's, it's been really hard. That's been the toughest part, I must say. I've, I've just been, I feel like I'm in jail. Yeah. You know, like you're just isolated away from every, the lifeblood of what being a musician really is, is, is communicating on a stage with, uh, with your people and, and, and meeting new fans face to face and, and, and sharing that experience with them because that's, that's why we love music so much. It's infectious, you know? Hmm. Yeah, it's been rough. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Uh... Over here in the UK, I don't think we really have any kind of idea what um, the state of play in places like Montreal is. You know, you get a wider picture of uh, the world and other countries and stuff, but the comparison is very, very different. Are things improving? Are things opening up now where you are? Yes. Yeah, so we, uh, starting September 1st, there's an app on your phone where you have to show when you go into businesses, for instance, uh, restaurants, bars, live events, whatever, um, even to get a cheeseburger, mm. you know? Um, and it basically shows like, oh, I'm double vaxxed. You know, this is it. And they can do a little uh, uh, scan of your QR code. code yeah. A QR code, exactly. And then that goes into the system and then they can allow you in. Um, so that is a trip. Like pff, we've never experienced that before. Um, but I guess this is the future. You know, I know that uh, Dave Grohl and the Foo Fighters did some stuff in uh, Los Angeles where they had these kind of similar things where you had to show proof of vaccination. I think it's great. I mean, like, listen, you know, the more vaccinated people, you know, let's just beat this thing. Let's get back to what it used to be like. A lot of friends of mine have to cancel their, their major tours right now in the States because people are getting sick. Yeah. You know, and I can't imagine what the, uh, the business managers and tour managers are doing. They're ripping out all their hair and they're like, oh crap, you know, we got to do this. Um, but yeah, it's just what's happening in our industry right now. So it's, it's a bummer, but I think that uh, I think we're getting a little bit closer to hopefully the end um, in 2022. 
you know. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I hope so too. Um, it's a hot topic in this country, a controversial one to be the, uh, to be discussed. We're not going to get into that here. What what about the overall effect then on all your personal projects over the last eighteen months? Have have you been able to drag yourself effectively through the bad times when it comes to those? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, I love challenges. I mean, I think challenges they really kind of graft you and they sharpen you and 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 you really dig deep when you have to make some really uh, difficult decisions. Like, you know, I have a band in Los Angeles and I was, I was planning when we released star God, I was planning a tour with them and then COVID hit and I had to push that off. Right. And that was a full record. I was ready to go forth and, and do it. Um, so looking back, I mean, I would already be back in Los Angeles three, probably about 10 various times going back and forth and doing stuff with him and doing stuff here. Oh, kitty cat. And <laughs> yeah, to good to see you. And um, so, yes, yeah, so the traveling thing's tough, but for uh, musically, it's mm. been very, very exciting because now it's just like, okay, there's the schedules are a little bit lessened. There's not all this traveling. There's not all this, like, we got to do this hurry up and wait kind of thing. It's like, I can sit here in my, in my room at my Mesa boogie over there. I have all kinds of fun tools over there to use. And I can really just kind of start sculpting. And then I, I get Glenn Robinson um, on Zoom or uh, I make a video with my iPad Pro mm. and also riffs. And then he'll be like, oh, what do you think about this? And like that and back and forth. So it's actually kind of improved us from the standpoint of like, I'll meet you here every Wednesday, every week at the time here. And you have to drive down, do all the thing. It's like, it keeps us working every single day consistently on new material. Always when I wake up in the morning, there's a new song or new idea in my email from him. We sculpt it. He comes over now into this room. I'll do vocals here. We send the stems out to Zach uh, St. John, my drummer, and Andrew James, my bass player. And they've been with me for over 10 years. Mm. They do all the stuff here. And then we bring it here. And then I'll take the Montreal band, and Crusoe and, and, and Gary McKenzie and Glenn Robinson. And we will go find a really unique location. And, um, and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll start playing them live which also takes it up to a really interesting level because that's what we want. We want that live feeling in the track. So when you listen to it, it almost feels like you're in a venue with us hearing it. And that's what I, ah, that's what I want, you know? And we also did like the Atmos mastering and everything too, because that's all a really cool thing. You've seen like, I think Loose Lists and all those different um, amazing cinematic, just incredible sound design that's going on. So Glenn and I did that through these songs on top of mastering for stereo and, and live. Because I'm like, well, that's that's great. We put the headphones on or you have a really great system in your car. You can really hear, oh, well, there's the kick drum there and then there's guitars here and then here's some delay coming through there. Like, it's incredible what you can do sonically. So I love it. I love it. Do you think this stuff that you picked up and you've learned during this period it is, is what you're going to carry. Even if tomorrow everything went back to normal and you could carry on doing exactly what it was, how you did it years ago, you would continue to um, put these almost restrictions on yourself to continue to create like you have been. Well, me, I, I've always loved playing live in a room with the band. Yeah. Like, like go Beatles, Zeppelin, Stones, you know, just be okay. You're in a room. Sounds great. Great mics, great outboard gear. Got your, you got, you got everything. You're good. Mm. And sit there and kind of playing away on stuff and see what happens. But what I do like about what I've learned and gained from this experience is it's the repetition that I can have alone to really harness what I really want to say. Mm. And I, we can take that and start to play around with it a little bit more. So anytime I'm feeling creative, I know I can get something cool and send it and it's going to start to make movement. If, we, if it's something we're like, yes. Sometimes we're just like, man, let's rework that. But a lot of times like, yes, let's go for it. Let's do it. You know, so I'll definitely apply what I've learned through COVID times, what I did pre-COVID, post-COVID, and, and mix those two things together because I think it's a, a very strong uh, concoction. Yeah. You seem like you're a very creative person. Does creativity come easy for you? Do you ever, do you ever suffer and get stuck or is it a constant flow? I love uh, transcendental meditation. And I love exercising. Um, so I, you know, I do, I do martial arts and I run and I, and I do you know, yoga and it, I like to kind of keep that stuff going um, and because it allows me to open up certain parts of my body and my mind to where, you know, when you get stuck on something, you're like, I can't figure this out. What's going on? No matter who comes in the room with you, 
you're like, there's, uh, what is this? Um, I need to go and get some quiet and separate myself and get my, my body moving and let it just kind of, ex, you know, get the oxygen pumping. And then I'm like, okay. And a lot of time when I'm on runs, long runs, I'll be listening to either a rough mix or like a song that we're currently mixing right. like that, because then I'm like, I'm really listening to it because I'm focused on listening. So I'm like, Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. we're going to cut that one little part of that lyric out and I'll text Glenn real quick. Make sure we do that or make a little mental note. Cause when I come in, we'll be like, I want to just time is money. Right. So I want to make sure that bang, 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 all that stuff out. But it's, that's, that's the beautiful thing about experimenting. And you're like a chemist, right? You're like, yeah. oh, does this work? Oh, pff, it blows up <laughs> your face. And you're like, oh, let's try a little bit of that. You know? And then all of a sudden your song starts to get some energy to it. And you're like, oh, lightning in the bottle. I think maybe. Let's go and make sure we can uh, get that with the band and have it sound good from a live perspective. Because we do all this stuff for the fans. Yeah. All for the fans. It's okay. Yeah. We, we want to, we're artists and we want to, you know, tell the story and have it rock for the fans to, to escape out of the two hours or hour, whatever time limit we have with them it's because they're paying a ticket to, to have some escapism mm. thrown up. Right. And, and if they're in their car or whatever, like if they're having a bad day, pop on one of our songs freedom fighter and really rock it out or gladiator or whatever we do that all for for their entertainment that's that's why because we want people to have a good time man you know and it, could be as sim- and it could be as simple as that um you wear many hats man you know it's no secret you talked about it at the start when you talked about your acting coach and stuff like that you've got many many hats but ultimately multiple talents from that focus on your musical side has music always been a prominent feature in your life? Like from a very early age, was it something you were very interested in and what encouraged you to kind of pick up your first instrument? Absolutely. Uh, my mom, um, she had Rolling Stone records and Michael Jackson records and everything. So when I was a little baby, probably four around there, you know, I wasn't at school yet, three, four. And so she would put records on and I would kind of sit there and I would look at those beautiful the artwork and everything. And just like, wow, what is this? Oh my God. You know? And I didn't know what it was. It was just like, like a picture book. You're like, wow, what is this? Oh, there's a thing that goes there. Oh, wicked. <laughs> so I'd always be turning the volume up really loud and put my head to it. Cause I wanted to, I love the vibration and how it made me feel just internally. Like I was like, oh, I feel really warm. And then I started moving my body and dancing a bit. I was like, that is so cool. And uh, the first guitar I picked up was uh it was a Kurt Cobain Jag, uh, Jag, what was it? Jagmaster, what is it called? The Jag, whatever. Anyways, it's a Fender. It was aqua blue and it was a right-handed. And my buddy just got it. And um, he had this beautiful Fender amp. It was two twelves. And I was around 10 and I plugged in and I just turned the volume way up and just started banging on it on the E. And I was like, what the fuck is this? And it was just like, it, it, it mesmerized me so much. I was like, I want this. So what is this? How, we, how do you do this? And he was showing me like, this is an A, this isn't a D. And this is, you know, I was like, oh, oh, and, you know, your fingers can't quite get it right there at the first time, but you just power through it. And then I, I didn't play for a while. And then I got into sports. And then when I came to Los Angeles, um, my buddy, Tuffy Williams at UCLA, we went to UCLA Extension because we're all working through the day trying to, trying to make our way and working on sets and everything, you know? He's like, hey, I play drums and my, here's my dad's guitar. And his dad used to hang out with like Garth Brooks and stuff back in the day. It was like, I'm, I'm tour with him and all that stuff. I was like, oh, cool. So we started getting in the studio and having some beers and just plugging away. And I just became obsessed. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't stop. Before then, I was writing poetry, like to my girlfriends and stuff, you know, because I had a long distance relationship when I moved to LA. I would write a poetry and all that because that was cool, right? And then I got really inspired by Jim Morrison. And so listening to that, being in Los Angeles on Sunset Boulevard, oh, that's the Whiskey A Go-Go. This is where Led Zeppelin played. Because I lived like right above the Viper Room. Like I was on Larrabee. So when I first moved, when I was like 19 years old, I looked right above the Viper Room. I'm like, what the hell is Viper Room? I didn't know what it was. So we, me and my buddies used to go down there and have drinks and stuff. And we see these amazing bands come in there. Some bands that are like massive now, but we saw them when they were like, you know, little guys. Yeah. And that whole culture just pulled me in. I was like, what, why do I? Cause I love that freedom of being on the stage with the lights and the microphone. And you get to tell your story with your buddies behind you, backing you up with some amazing riffage and just, like, just heavy drums and just full on. And how people will just be taken by that and how I was taken by that was just incredible. 
you get that too in a good scene on a movie, but mostly in music, when you're singing your own stuff, it's it's the top. It's the top for me, you know. Considering so, all the things, different things you do, um, and I'm not going to ask you which is more satisfying. It's more the fact: do you get different levels of satisfaction depending upon what you do? So we're talking whether you're playing live, whether you've written a particularly song that you're super proud of, or whether you've been part of a great scene or writing a particular um, screenplay yourself, that kind of thing. It's it's really what fires me up is a collaboration. Ah, I love collaboration. I mean, yeah, you can always be the main guy, the lead guy up there going for it, but to get to that point. Yeah. A lot of people around you, by the way. A lot of people around you, like holding that torch and rooting for you. And you're bouncing ideas off and you're tirelessly like in your room banging on the guitar, trying to figure it out. But then it's just like this cohesiveness of just this just people love and and they they want to see you do good, the support of all that stuff on top of your talents, mixing with other people's talents. It's just it's an amazing experience all the way through. It's, it's never just a one man show. It's 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 literally an army of people get you to for you to do that, and for you to do that big time, it's a it's a big machine. Do you think that's forgotten quite easily, particularly when you're selling yourself uh, as a solo artist? And you've obviously got other bands. Um, you know, uh, mad mad maddest of mad maddest of madmen. I was trying to say it earlier on. There that's we the go. Madness. Say five times fast. It's really hard. Yeah, yeah. And MFICs. M- MFICs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So when it comes to like then obviously effectively calling it a solo project, you 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 seem to have gone to uh, great lengths to also talk about who's involved and stuff like that. Is that quite important to you for people to see your name, but also be aware that there are so many other people involved in that? Absolutely, because I look back on all the times I've been through where I had zero dollars, mm. like negative negative money, right? And a buddy comes in, he's like, who has the talent and who gets paid a lot to do it, do that job. And he's like, dude, man, I got you. We just jump in the studio, man. Don't worry about it. You got some here. I, I feel I got this. I know I can see what you want to do and I'm going to help you get there. And so I don't forget about those people that were there for me along the way. Like you're, you're my family, like mm. my missus, like, you know, you, my kids inspire me and give me, give me the strength to get up in the morning, and keep fighting on. So if I look back on where I started to where I'm now, I have a lot of people to be grateful for and thank along the way. And even coming to meet, you know, Glenn Robinson here in, in Montreal and, and what it did from a songwriting perspective of how we were like brothers from another mother that we push each other and we pull each other and we really get into it. Um, that is a gift too in itself, you know? And, and so, you know, I, I, I like to look back at like, you know, for, for instance, Sam Medill, he lived in my building on Wilshire Corridor. And he was working at Skywalker Ranch in Northern California near where I grew up. And he had a studio called Steakhouse Studios in Los Angeles, right? Well, we're talking Queens of the Stone Age are there. Where I was there, where Queens of the Stone Age was there. And I got to meet him. I'm like, holy cow, you guys are amazing. Like, that was like, it's, I was starstruck. I was like, this is great. And, um, and then, so then you start to get into like, holy cow, how does this work? How does, that's a Neve console? Oh my God, I've heard about this thing. How does it work? There's so many buttons. And like, <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, and like, oh, that's tape. And the t- we can do the tape of the thing. He's like, yeah, dude, check this out. And he sets it all up. And then you get in there and you start listening to the different styles of mics. And you start to like hear the textures and the difference. And like, this is a 12 string. This is acoustic. This is a Gibson. This is, you know, then you get the big amps in there and you get the big band in there. And you're like, oh my God, it's been like this educational experience from what I've learned with literally zero dollars mm. and learning through just asking questions and, and, and friends of mine and people I've worked with shown me hey, uh, this is Swing House Studios, and this is another amazing producer, Warren Hewitt, who's going to, um, who re- wants to mix your next EP, and he's going to introduce you to guys at Capitol Records. They're going to master it for you, and I always sat in on every single session, and they're like, normally the artist doesn't sit in on these sessions. I'm like, I just, I'm going to be, I'm flat on the wall. Like, I just want to learn. Show me, yeah. how does it work? What is that? What are you doing there with that sample? That's a drum sample? Oh, to give it a little bit more. Ah, oh, okay, cool, got it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how to do it, but I got it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you just like, and they love it. And they're like, oh, cool. And you start to talk with them and you start to learn from them. Same thing with filmmaking. I did the exact same thing with that. With DPs, with directors, with writers, with, yeah. with editors. You know, I was sitting on every single music video we've made. My hand's been involved from an editing perspective, from a directing perspective, from production perspective, from all of it. Because I wanted them to have kind of this cohesiveness all the way through to where we are now. 
So all the live stuff you see, I cut that in here. Okay. I'll cut all that stuff in here and do all that. Cause it's just like, you know, I want to make sure our fans get the best of, of us, you know, it's not just passed on to this guy who just is doing it as a job. Like this is like heart and soul studio pretty much of like, we want you to enjoy this experience. We really hope you do, you know? Do you, do you want to, uh, I guess over time and as you, as you continue to move forward, basically pass on what you've learned to others as well. So how you picked up things, someone comes to you and you're, and wants to effectively watch you work or see how you do certain things, you would want to do that. Absolutely. If they, if their hearts into it and it's not just like a money thing or whatever, like it has to be there. The passion of music cuts through all the BS. Mm. There's that, like, I want to learn, show me everything. I will work 15 hours a day if I need to, you know, no breaks, like go, you know, I love that attitude. Um, I, I, I grew up in a, a house of very, very hard workers. Yeah. And, and, you know, my grandfather was a rancher and a real estate guy. And my, my dad was a contractor and an aviator. Like everybody did pretty extreme things. And I always saw them like on the weekends, they're not sitting on their ass They're outside, like mowing the lawn. Like they're always moving. You know, I was like, I love that work ethic. And so even from my grandmother to a lot of members of my family, they're such hard workers, mm. cousins, my brothers, my sisters, hard, hard workers. And, you know, I want my kids to know that it's like, it's not all about this, man. You know, sometimes you got to get out there and like get yourself, get your hands dirty and, and start to sweat a bit, you know, lugging up amps or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah got to get that there, you know, because I need to plug that in for the sound. Because it's all about the sound. How am I going to get that sound? I'm not putting samples on. I want the real amp to play the real sound for the real audience. So it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah, we, we do. I do all that. All those things. I don't know how you do it. I don't know how you uh <laughs> Can, I don't know how you get in this balance where you, as you said at the start, you're married, you have two children and you have all these different things that you are capable and able to do yet. Somehow you're still able to meditate, still able to exercise and all of this. What's your, what is What are you doing? How? <laughs> oh, I'm sober. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sober. Uh, 17 months. So that helps, right? Does that take out that stuff? You know, because listen, I, I battle with my demons I had seven years sobriety and then I went out for a couple of years and then I, I would jump back in because uh, the people that are in those, in those programs for me, they're my second family and we watch out for each other. And because if I'm not healthy, how am I going to perform at my optimal peak? Mm. I think of myself like a racehorse, right? What, do you, what are you going to put in the racehorse? You're going to put like all this stuff. Like, no, like I've done my time in that world. And I've experienced all those experiences you could have in Sunset Boulevard and the highest of the highs and lowest of lows, right? Yeah. If, if I'm going to be out there in the public and be doing this type of work, you know, I want kids to be able to ask me all the questions they need to ask me about all the things. And if I'm not, if I'm not living my life uh, in this direction of just like, you know, it's not about those things. It's about music. It's not about those things. It's about film. It's, you know, you get down to the core of why we do what we do about writing, about whatever it is. It's about the writing. It's not about the flash and the cash and the chicks, and the big houses. If you do your job really well, sure, you could have all those things and that's great and dandy. But all those things can go pretty quick if you get stuck on a couple of those other little, you know, drugs and alcohol can really ruin pretty quick and your career. So I want to be able to be like a Jagger and go for the rest, you know, until I'm 80 and God bless Charlie Watts. You know, what if what an amazing drummer and Keith and all those guys like I look at those guys. I'm like, yeah, I know they're crazy and they're amazing and they keep rolling, but they they it's not it's, to them. It's the music. The music keeps them going, you know, and and that's that's my drive. And that's why I push it, because if I'm not doing that, I'm not doing my job right. It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, thank thank you for sharing that with us. Sure. I don't normally sell that to the <laughs> Yeah, I just felt like the right time. Awesome. Um, your latest single, Freedom Fighter. Yes, sir. Um, the words, freedom, determination and resolve. Now, from an outside perspective, let's just talk about, say, the UK. We hear things like that and eyes roll to a certain degree. Kind of, oh, OK, that, that sort of terminology. So rather than go down that route, I wanted to kind of understand when you, when, from your perspective, what do those three words, freedom, determination, and resolve mean to you? 
the freedom to change, the resolve to resolve any conflict that's in front of you. You have solutions. You just got to dig deep, right? And then the last one, I mean, you know, come on, you know, you don't let anything hold you back. Mm. Push through, you know, get it done, move on to the next. It's like, that's the whole, like having the determination to continue no matter how bad it is in front of you. You know, this is what the song represents, the freedom to have that ability to do it and never give up no matter what, no matter how bad it is or how ugly it gets, you keep on leaning forward and leaning into it and you can get through it because you have to, else you're just going to waste away, you know. Is that quite important to you that when it comes to songs like this and some of your previous work as well, that not, not only that are they quite endemic and sound like they belong in a stadium and played with fireworks and so on, but also that they have a certain level of uplifting uh, quality to them and that they are supposed to almost got your back and G you up to a certain degree. Is that quite important to you? I love the whole G you up thing, man. I think that's really, that's really cool. And, and um, you know, I, for me, yeah, we, our hope is to play those giant stadiums and to get there. And, and if the fans want it and they give us the opportunity to give us the stage to play these songs at that level, I, I'm there. I'm there a thousand percent for them. But I do, I love, I love, I love going against the odds. Yeah. It's like being in our business, it's pretty much, all the odds are against you. You are not going to succeed. Um, you're going to fail and you're going to fail young. And it's going to be quite hard. And I've, I've had a lot of, a lot of buddies of mine that have, they're no longer with us, but they're after the same, the same goal. Right. And so I like to have that, not necessarily an angelic, cause I'm more of like a spiritual guy, not like in a box, you know, give good, get good kind of thing. Like a lot of love and compassion for everyone out there, no matter who they are. Hmm. so we i like to tap into a lot of that mixture too with it because yeah we all struggle we all have issues we have problems but what i love in life is conquering those things hmm. i love to rise above it and teach and educate and be there to help whoever may need an extra lift up you know yeah. it's not always about me you know what i mean i got a lot of people in my life that need my constant attention too so i'm there for them too to help them up because if that that's kind of the nutshell of why I make music and why we write the way we write, like Gladiator, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Or Stay With Me, you know, or Bulletproof. And next will be Youngblood, mm. you know? And then we're going to get into, you know, we have an old song called No Failure and Reckless. I mean, it's just like all these things have an inner strength to them that is in the core of the writing and with the music entangled with it. So hopefully that projects. And I think that comes back to what you were saying quite a little while ago about the live experience and that connection uh, with the fans. That seems like such an important, important aspect, not just of your music, but of you. Yeah, that's one thing. I mean, like when I heard Oasis talk about their music, you know, it's a very much, it's like a soccer team. Yeah. Oh, sorry, football team. <laughs> it's like a football team, right? Like we're all like, all right, let's go watch the game kind of thing, right? And they made songs about the people, not about them about the people and i love that because it's selfless you know it's about let's put on the people with the people mm -hmm. you know, and then have it filter out like this you know back and forth and that energy has to happen i think you know, for a great show to occur and that energy be transferred it can't just be like oh it's all about me man you know yeah it's, like, it's not us you know so i i work really hard and tirelessly to to try to bring that all together when we make music because you know people are going to listen to it and so we got to make sure that it connects you know? with that in mind then do you think you're quite well versed with modern music audiences in regards to the instant kind of gratification social media presence requirements that come with being an artist and a band these days i work really hard and i invest a lot of a lot of time and energy and resources into figuring out how to be better at it right um the, the problem is out there is there's a lot of companies that say they're going to do certain things and then it becomes zombies and bots and everything. When, and you're almost like, oh, yeah, we're really going to use the algorithm here and we're really going to do it organically. And you're like, OK, cool. So we're going to build some things here and then it's going to organically go out there. And I've learned the hard way in a couple of deals where it was like, OK, well, they're, they're not doing that. We fired them on the spot. Um, my whole thing is that I want to make amazing content have it there for people to watch, listen, learn about where, whatever, 
and have it happen organically. Mm -hmm. I want real fans to come in and talk about it. I don't want like, we have all these bots in India. We have, you know, I want real people. And we're seeing from the demographics, we're getting 13 year olds. We're getting very young people, which I'm really quite astounded. Like you guys like rock and roll because a lot of kids are into, you know, like Post Malone or like Taylor Swift or like E. And that's totally fine too. So, I mean, rock, as you probably have seen with, with our, the music we love so much, mm. hard rock, metal, we're kind of like here. Mm. And then there's you know, pop and, you know, uh, One Direction or whatever, and, you know, like hip hop and stuff. And they're just, they're sailing up here. So, you know, I love what ACDC does, man, because they just keep it kind of, they keep it rock and roll, but they got this like edge of pop here and they're, they're powerful and, and they got grip to them, you know? Yeah. I'm, I'm focusing on too is like how can we make it so we have all the things everything's presented properly and we're doing it organic mm. so if you want to come down to the shop cool but we're not going to buy you to come down to the shop you know yeah i'm not buying anymore i'm like you we're here i'll put you there i'll do some hashtags let me know you know come say hello and have a conversation you know Simple. it's it's all you can do is continue to try until the algorithm changes again and you've got to learn it all over again <laughs> that aspect yeah the learning has been pretty intense mm -hmm. I've, been, I've been taking some courses and stuff too just to be like okay well you know when i have to pass the keys off again to somebody i want to make sure i know what i'm what i'm passing off and oh that's incredible yeah yeah because like you can be i mean listen facebook and instagram are killing it right now yeah you can pay Facebook and Instagram to promote your stuff and it, you can do it quite well. You know, they have a good team of people over there and you can do it. But I said to myself, like, why not just let it just be there yeah. and you know how to tag it? Cause there are ways of doing it without spending a dime. And then I, and that's the real winners for me. The people that can pull that together and start to get a real solid fan base, diehard fans mm. for organic feeds. That's the, that's the ticket, man. So I've been, I've been educating myself on those at, uh, aspects. Uh, the past couple of weeks it's been mind-boggling what you can learn oh good 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 i hope that continues then uh taylor i got one more for you then before i let you go and it's kind of just a reiteration more than anything else uh, just go through over the next couple of months what are your plans in regards to the releasing of the music perhaps um long-term work on an album and any live shows you've got right so we are going to be going to mechanic studio in september we're working out the dates on friday every fourth of the month we're going to have a brand new saw a live song so that's every release every fourth of the month on instagram uh we are kind of we've looked at a couple of venues to do some shows but the capacity ratio has been kind of minimal so we're going to do a live stream show at the mechanic studio at the church so i'm working on all those things right now too and then possible tour in january i'm working on right now too through california and we're gonna start working our way through the states but i want to start in california where i'm from and uh, hit the whole state and then work our way up north and, and across. So I'm working out those logistics right now. And, uh, but listen, we have releases till next August. They'll be coming out every single fourth of the month. So we're, I'm going to be very busy here, making sure there's video content, new merchandise will be coming out every fourth. And, um, and then we're going to start doing Q and A's and a lot of live stream acoustic stuff. In the meantime, every Friday, excuse me, at 6 PM Eastern standard time on my Instagram channel starting next week. There you go. Wow. Absolutely incredible. Taylor, thank you so much for taking the time to do this. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. This has been awesome. I love looking at your little kitty cat. What's your kitty cat's name? Zelda. Zelda. Like the video game? <laughs> exactly like the video game. <laughs> exactly like the video game. <laughs> My favorite game growing up, by the way. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on GBHBell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Tumblr. Go to Patreon to help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favor, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal. What else is life for?